Please be seated. I'd like to ask that everyone please silence your cell phones. Welcome to the University College 70th Convocation and Commencement Celebration. I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands we now stand. I'm Dean Mike Fresiello. I invite our class marshal to present our banner. College Marshal Patricia McBride will proudly carry the banner for University College during this Sunday's commencement. Each Syracuse University school and college will present its banner at the dome, which signifies the cohesiveness of one university. While the flag is presented, the following history and mission will be shared with the audience. University College was established in 1918 as the College of Syracuse University's Part-Time Studies and Continuing Education. University College is the home of Bachelor of Professional Studies degrees and works with the universities, schools, and colleges to create courses and programs for part-time students seeking a Syracuse University degree. It sounds better when they say that they don't. Patricia is receiving the degree in creative leadership. Patricia, please come forward to receive a soul of gratitude. to invite Reverend Dr. Brian Conkle to offer an invocation. Please join me. Here in this space, we are gathered, bonded by our sense of urgency, fused with a thirst for knowledge and hunger for wisdom, and held together with a holy longing for life-giving community. Here at this time we are assembled to be held accountable to our most lofty of values, to be reminded of our Creator's dreams for a more peaceful future. Here in this opportunity we are united, filled with creative inquiry, bursting with innovative vision, and occupied with a sacred movement for solidarity. Here we're intricately and intimately woven into the single web of this earth community. So as these graduates commence out and into the world in service to our common good, may we all learn and listen, may we search and explore for the sake of life in its fullness. This is our prayer, O oh God, we trust it is your desire. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Pongo. We gather this evening to celebrate the candidates of Syracuse University's class of 2018 who have completed their degrees part-time. We have students graduating from seven of the schools and colleges within Syracuse University, representing 36 majors. All graduates wear a tassel that represents their school and college. University College's tassel is royal blue, signifying royalty, trust, and integrity. This evening, we will recognize seven of our students for their academic achievement by naming them prestigious alumni scholars. We will present awards to those who excelled in their majors, a diverse group of achievers primed for success following graduation. We will hear from our student speaker, and we will honor our university friends, our staff, faculty, and donors who have helped us accomplish our mission. Let me introduce our distinguished guests. Joining me on the stage from your left to right, and please stand and remain standing. Our college marshal, Patricia McBride. Our student speaker, Benjamin Vasquez. 
Dean of Hendricks Chapel, Reverend Dr. Brian Conkle. Tonight's speaker, Senior Vice President and Chief of Staff to the Chancellor, Candace Campbell Jackson. Vice Chancellor and Provost of Syracuse University, Dr. Michelle Wheatley. Academic Director of the Bachelor of Professional Studies Program and Associate Dean for Academic Affairs at the School of Information Studies, Dr. Arthur Thomas. Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at University College, Dr. Karen Bull. And Director of the HEOP Program and Assistant Director of Student Administrative Services at UC, Marcia Seen. We also have some special guests who are here to support and celebrate with our class marshal. They are Patricia's colleagues and co-workers. We are pleased to welcome Deputy Mayor Sharon Owens, Common Council President Helen Hudson, Syracuse City Clerk John Papanis, and Onondaga legislators Monica Williams and Linda Irvin. Thank you so much for being here. We also welcome Dr. J. Michael Haney, Vice Chancellor for Strategic Initiatives and Innovation, Colonel Ron Novak, Executive Director of Veteran and Military Affairs, Vice President of Community Engagement, B. Gonzalez, Senior Vice President and Chief Communication Officer, Fire Lawyer. Thank you for being here. Thank you and thank you. Graduates, many of you have benefited from the generosity of our donors who are committed to supporting and preserving our history and mission. By funding a variety of scholarships and grants, they have helped make it possible for you to reach your goal of a college degree. We'd like to recognize our donors for their generosity. The accomplishments you celebrate today should be shared with those who have supported you along the way. Family, friends, employers, all those who are important to you and cheered you on. Let's please take a moment to thank them as well. I would also like to acknowledge my wonderful, fantastic, tremendous colleagues at University College who as a team strive to provide access and support to our students. Members of the faculty and staff, please stand and be recognized. It indeed takes one university to make events such as this uh, a success. We also want to recognize the staff of Hendricks Chapel and Campus Catering. Through their hard work, they've made it a very special week on campus for all of us. So thank you very much. And finally, I want to extend a special greeting to graduates and families who are viewing this online. says look up to the balcony. <laughs> Congratulations to you as well. Congratulations. You have achieved something that many aspire to, a Syracuse University degree. You are here today in this moment because of your determination, resolution, and intentionality of thought and action because you came to Syracuse University with a purpose. I've shared a few compelling, just a few conversations with my friend and colleague, Reverend Conkle, about the role of purpose, of how the ebb and flow of life continually challenges us to stay true to ourselves and others, to live life purposefully. It's not easy, nor should it be. For many of us who are first-generation college students, our purpose may not have always been apparent or even considered taking form only after we discover this wonderful thing called higher education without direction or guidance. For those of us who identify as non-traditional students, our purpose was likely shaped by any combination of external factors, such as career advancement, financial stability, or simply the urgency to change the trajectory of our lives. 
For all of us who know the indescribable feeling and relief of joy from completing a college degree part-time, we most certainly questioned our purpose as we attended class while managing the ever-increasing demands placed on us of our personal and professional commitments, of the challenges every day, every week, every semester, to not let anything slip through the cracks. Some or all of these circumstances, events, inputs, and outcomes have shaped your sense of purpose up to this point. Now, after the elation, celebration, and sleep, because you know that's the first thing you did after your last exam, you have one more question to answer. What will be your purpose now? The question is yours, but I do know, we at University College know, that as a Syracuse University graduate, whatever your purpose, you will live an authentic life. Knowing who you are, your values, your principles, and your goals. We know that you will keep moving forward and continue to grow, and that you will be fearless in the face of failure, and humble in the laurels of success. We know you will achieve great things, that you will continue to awe your families with your strength and brilliance, that you will shape your personal and professional relationships through engaged, informed, and civil discourse, that you will be a steward and champion of lifelong learning. We know this because you, like thousands of part-time students before you and the thousands to come after, give us purpose. Like this magnificent university, University College continues to evolve, but our core mission, our purpose, remains the same. To support and serve all individuals who wish to transform their lives through a Syracuse University degree. On behalf of the University College staff and faculty, it has been a true privilege and honor to serve you. Thank you for allowing us to join you on this incredible journey. So we just tell you to join us tonight. She and I always have a room that uh, we'll cry first. So I lost the bet. Our guest speaker this evening is Senior Vice President and Chief of Staff for Chancellor Severin, Candace Campbell Jackson. Candace came to Syracuse University in 2015 from the University of Akron, Ohio, where she served as Vice President for Student Success and Vice Provost for Academic Success, providing strategic and operational leadership to nearly 600 employees and over 20 student success and student academic support units. Prior to her career in higher education, Candace was an attorney in the public law and corporate departments of the law firm Buckingham, Doolittle, and Burroughs, LLP, practicing in the Akron and Cleveland offices. A graduate of Howard University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in journalism, Candace earned a JD from the University of Akron. She was selected to participate in this prestigious Harvard Institute for Educational Management program for higher education administrators. She is a frequent speaker and lecturer on the topics of leadership and higher education. Please join me in welcoming my colleague, Candace Campbell Jackson. Thank you, Dean. So before I get started with my brief remarks, I want to ask Dean Conkle, are we allowed to celebrate a little bit tonight in this space? Okay. So, I want us all to take a moment and be as celebratory as we can about the accomplishments of these graduates. Distinguished and dedicated faculty, our committed and caring staff, 
the Infantiello, and the Distinguished Stage Party that I'm lucky to call dear colleagues, and many colleagues who are sitting amongst the crowd today. I am honored and privileged to speak with you on a day that is historic on so many levels. Now, no doubt, this is a day that's historic for each of you, because you triumphed in the classroom, you've overcome countless challenges on your life's journey to this day. No doubt, this day is historic for your family, your friends, the UC faculty and staff who taught you, counseled you, consoled you, walked alongside of you, even sometimes caring you, and here, there, today, cheering you and celebrating your achievements. There is no place they would rather be. We know this is a historic day for University College, celebrating its own centennial year. Let's pause for a moment and reflect on that history. The vision of the faculty member, L. Wood Smith, who led on October 18, 1918, the first evening session for adults who could only attend to their studies part time. I will tell you, and I'll probably embarrass the dean a little bit, that Mr. Smith's vision for a college experience for adult learners and the special care and tailoring they would need is embodied today in Dean Fasciella. I had an opportunity just briefly today to talk with him, and I want to share with all of you that what I would say about his reflection on this evening and all of your accomplishments is that he was moved. And I know how special this class is to him, his first graduating class as Dean. So here's the Dean Fasciella. move to the present. When you're asked to share your remarks at commencement, it's really a daunting assignment. And this one even more so. Commencement speakers talk out loud to themselves and others about what can I say to motivate? What can I say to inspire? And when I look at this class and I've read your stories and I know your journeys and I know your accomplishments, you're pretty well motivated. And in fact, you're the inspiring Iron actors, you know, at this stage and on this stage. When I realize that you're working one or two or even three jobs and that you're raising families and serving our country, you're doing this thing called life so well with so much focus, dedication, excellence, and bravery. What really can I say? So I thought about it long and hard, and I realized the only thing that I can offer you, in my humble opinion, is encouragement that you adopt the practice of being present and awake in your own life, in the life of your family and loved ones, in the lives of people you have responsibility for leading. So I heard the dean say you had just one more thing to do, which was to figure out your purpose. And so I'm going to modify that just a bit and say right now I want you to be right now and right here so you have nothing to do right now but be here okay in the New York Times bestseller The Power of Now author Eckhart Tolle surmises that we should focus on the present moment rather than losing ourselves in regret and resentment about the past or anxiety about the future his book was written over 20 years ago and given our ever-growing dependency on social media and being connected in our lives that get busier and busier by the hour, I felt the urge to reread this book and see if I could take from it new insights for today's frenetic piece and perhaps a few words for you. A real-life example of being mindful and being present is maybe thinking about what happened to more than a few of us on the way to this commencement. So we're rushing from work, we're grabbing the kids, we're getting dressed. There are minor annoyances and conflicts along the way. Maybe we thought out loud, why won't the universe for just once allow my family and friends to be where they say they're going to be on time and with no further demands on me, the graduate? Did anybody think that? Okay, thank you for your honesty. Others who've written about this book have said that it really illustrates how our obsession with the past and the future 
prevent us from giving our full attention to the present moment, a moment like this. So as I encourage you to be present in this experience, I want to ask you to think about three things. First, think of the people who encouraged you to pursue your college degree and who kept you going when you thought about the future. Next, think of a staff member or a faculty member who gave you counsel or special time to teach you a concept with which you were struggling. Or who asked you how are you doing at just the moment when you really need to tell somebody how you were doing and how you were really feeling. Think of that faculty or staff member that was there for you. Now think for a minute about yourself. And those of you who've been on this journey, completing your degree on a part-time basis, you have had little time to think about yourself. But I want you to take the time. I want you to be present. I want you to think about yourself, your journey, your obstacles, your obstacles overcome, your ability to persevere, your gratitude. And take the time to be amazed at what you have accomplished. Don't let your mind wander to what, to what do I still have to do this evening? Will I find a new job? Will I get a promotion with my new degree? I believe the answer is yes, but our mind's not going there right now. That's for another time. Be here now and be present. Take the time to be present and take a mental selfie. Create a mental Snapchat video. Your mental selfie will not get lost in the thousand photos you took this week. And the mental Snapchat will not be gone in 20 minutes. So take the time to be present. As I was looking for my inspiration to come before you today, I thought about your children and your grandchildren that you have inspired. I heard from Vice Chancellor Haney uh, this week that the University College building there's always kids in there. And I said, Mike, thanks for not telling me. I would have been over there holding the babies while people went to class. So by a show of hands, how many of you have had your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews on campus with you, either by design or when childcare was not available? Who's had their kids and kids with them? Okay, great. Having your children on a college campus broadens their horizons immeasurably. And you have now taken a step to the second generation and the third generation of young people who will go on following your example and achieve a college degree. Your young loved ones have college aspirations now, so keep inspiring and leading your families along their higher education journeys. And be present again for those family members that you will be. There's a few more tips I want to offer. I, I know that our marshal and our student speaker are receiving their degrees in creative leadership, and so I want to give them direction and just a little help as they get ready to lead. I was listening to their plans for ongoing education and great job opportunities, so I know that um, these two leaders are going to have many people who are they're responsible for leading. So the first thing that I would offer to you is, again, be present for the people that you lead. Be intentional about your presence. Make it a point to walk the halls and meet and lead. Understand that people will come to you to be with you. They don't need you to do more. They just need you to be more, be with them more. So I want to give you that piece of advice. Because I think it reminds us that our people that we have the privilege of leading really want the ability to think through things with us, reason aloud with us, with you, and be assured that you are confident in the way they're approaching a problem. So with your encouragement, they will act. Remember to be present in your leadership. I mentioned earlier, looking for my inspiration. And today, I met a student who, while he's not a UC graduate, he really models 
how much in the moment he is, and he was when I encountered him, but also he reminds me of really the ties that bind us all together as members of the Orange family. So this morning I was walking in the lobby of the Whitman Business School building, and he asked me if I knew of any events he should be attending. Well, that struck me kind of odd. But he said he was here to receive his MBA, and that he is an active duty service member stationed in Quantico, Virginia. He'd been studying for his MBA, MBA online, and he did not get the chance to feel what it was like to be on campus as much as he hoped. Many of you might feel like you've been on campus plenty, but here's somebody who didn't have the chance to walk these grounds. He then shared with me that he was the first in his family to receive his BA or an advanced degree, and that while others might think that it was just a piece of paper, it meant so much more to him. Why? Well, he further shared that his father only had a first grade education because his father was from a very large family of 10 siblings in the Philippines, and education was out of reach. He asked me if he was oversharing, being that we had just met and all. And then he said, well, we are all orange, aren't we? I can just talk, can't I? And I said, yes, you can. The final thought he shared with me was that his father had passed away two years ago and how he wished he could see his father and tell his father that he hoped he had made him proud. A perfect stranger, except we are both orange, he said. He got teary-eyed, I got teary-eyed. We exchanged a hug and I told him that his father was with him. And he said, I know, I feel his presence. I made it and my father knows. So if you adopt the practice of being present, like this young man, you can focus on just how awesome it feels to be in Henry's Chapel amongst your classmates and your loved ones. You shake it off the feelings of stress and anxiety that have no value and in fact detract from the joy and celebratory nature that you're earning a college degree is really all about. University College Class of 2018, we don't want you to miss this moment or any other special moment in your incredible lives. Congratulations, be present, be orange, and know your university could not be more proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Candace, for sharing your insights and wisdom with us. Good evening, my name is Karen Wolf, and the next part of our program highlights awards given to our friends and partners who endorse and support part-time education and lifelong learning. I ask Dean Fasciello and Provost Sweetly to proceed to the lower stage. This newly created award recognizes the outstanding contributions of a university college staff member in support of our mission and whose contributions have been instrumental to the success of the college and the students we serve. Nominated by the UC staff, the recipient is thought to make significant impact on the programs and students of the college, represents university college's spirit, demonstrates ability and creative problem solving and models professionalism in carrying out responsibilities. The recipient of the Dean's Excellence Award is Jenny McLaughlin, Director of Information Technology. She works late into the night and weekends. 
gets to keep UC going. Jenny's positive attitude spreads to the building every day. She significantly impacts the programs and students of the college. She understands the importance of keeping our systems running smoothly and is aware that students, faculty, and staff often need immediate assistance. Jenny is always pleasant, understanding, and approachable, no matter how many urgent requests she gets in any given day. She truly represents University College's spirit. Jenny, thank you for coming forward and accepting this award. which recognizes a Syracuse University unit that has contributed to University College's success. The service award goes to the Office of Veteran and Military Affairs in recognition of the support their department provides to our staff and students. Second only to University College, no other division within the university understands the educational needs and expectations of non-traditional students better than OVMA. We share a common sense of service to students, which creates a seamless level of support and engagement across our unions. We extend our thanks to the entire department. Will Executive Director Colonel Novak please come forward?
The Nancy C. Elliott Award is named for a former director of academic advising at University College. This honor recognizes the graduate with the highest overall grade point average for a first bachelor's degree. It goes to Andre Finkelstein, who completed a Bachelor of Arts degree in Geography from the College of Arts and Sciences with a GPA of 3.806. Andre, please come forward and accept your award. The Sylvia Wyckoff Award recognizes outstanding achievement in the College of Visual and Performing Arts. Professor Wyckoff joined the faculty of the Syracuse University School of Art in 1942 and retired in 1981. In recognition of her passion for art and to continue her legacy, we present this year's work to Philip Adams, who is graduating with a bachelor's degree in fine arts. Philip, please come forward. I am pleased to introduce our student speaker, Benjamin Vasquez. Benjamin earned a Bachelor of Professional Studies degree in Creative Leadership at University College. Like many of our students, Ben juggled work and other responsibilities while attending college. He works full-time at the Village of Waterloo Police Department and part-time at the Seneca County Sheriff's Office. Last summer, Ben was chosen from a field of 7,200 applicants to complete a White House internship. He said the experience was one of the most humbling and exciting experiences during his time at SU. A few weeks ago, Ben received the Chancellor's Award for Public Engagement and Scholarship. He is the first part-time student to receive this prestigious honor. This award recognizes graduate and undergraduate students who have significantly contributed to their communities through innovative public scholarship and community engagement. Ben is graduating with a GPA of 3.75 and is currently working on his master's degree in Homeland Security at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Benjamin, as our student speaker, please come forward to accept the stole of gratitude.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'd like to first thank the Dean for asking me to speak tonight, and it's truly a tremendous honor to be here. But before I go any further, class of 2018, congratulations. We worked very hard to meet you. Tonight marks the end of a long journey for many of us. Sleepless nights, full-time jobs, and families are just a few obstacles many of you had to overcome to walk across this stage here tonight. When I was first asked to be the student speaker, I gave a great deal of thought of what I was speaking to about tonight. I decided to centralize my message about what sets us apart from the traditional college student. Each and every graduate in this room brings something different to the table. Although the traditional college student might have a part-time job while attending school, what sets us apart is the experiences we were able to bring in to help make invaluable connections between our coursework and the challenges we face at work. We were able to share the experiences we encountered from our work, day-to-day -day life, and other educational institutions. We learned how to budget and prioritize our time to continue to maintain our family and work commitments. For most of us, University College was our second full-time job. We are here because we want to better our families, our careers, and ourselves. I could not go any further without expressing our thankfulness to the sacrifices our loved ones endured during this journey. Thank you for being there during our most difficult times, supporting our dreams, and making this our day. I would also like to express my gratitude to all the students. Because of each other and the challenges we shared, we all learned to find common ground. Through engaging with my fellow classmates, I was able to broaden my perspective, implement newly learned skills that made me a better person professionally and socially. We all we are all prepared to take the next step in our lives, no matter what they are. Last but not least, we owe our appreciation to the dedicated faculty, professors, and support staff. Our professors understood that work ran late and we were a few minutes late submitting an assignment. Our academic advisors would spend hours working with us to ensure we were registered for classes and were on track to graduate on time. Without the dedicated staff here at Syracuse University, we wouldn't be here today. What is it that makes University College a solution for those individuals who are seeking to earn their college degree right out of high school while working? It is the fact that a student can acquire a year of quality work experience in a field in which they wish to pursue a career for every year they invest in their college education. This makes a newly graduated 21 or 22-year-old student more marketable for employers in their prospective career field. University College affords us a distinctive opportunity because it provides those of us who are already in the workforce the ability to incorporate what we are learning at Syracuse University immediately into our careers. This has allowed us to enhance certain leadership skills and make modifications to others. We then brought these hands-on work experiences to the classroom, where we shared them with classmates during our weekly discussions. University College is working on its 100th year of providing college education to non-traditional students. I am so proud to be a part of such a great celebration as we continue to pave the way for future non-traditional students. It is now our responsibility to serve as ambassadors to University College and encourage those who want a college degree but feel it is not an attainable goal to pursue their dreams. We are living proof that anything is possible with hard work and dedication. We owe abundant gratitude to the faculty, staff, and our classmates who have helped us earn this degree, and to Syracuse University for playing an instrumental role in helping each one of us take the next step in our professional lives. Everyone, please join me in a round of applause in thanking those who have helped make tonight possible. Thank you, Benjamin. Will Dean Fracciello and Provost Wheatley proceed to the lower stage at this time? We will now recognize our alumni scholars. Each of these students has excelled academically while juggling countless other responsibilities. These bachelor's degree candidates earned a minimum GPA of 3.633. Scholars, your presence in our classrooms enriched this institution 
and you have distinguished yourselves among many capable and committed students. When I call your name, please come forward and enter from the right side of the stage to receive a memento. Dean Crosciello will present the awards to our alumni scholars and Provost Wheatley will acknowledge their accomplishments. The class of 2018 alumni scholars are Carlia Bear, Benjamin Vasquez. Mr. Philip Adams.
like to ask in the audience to please stand while the bread is processing. Neil P. Ryan, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Elizabeth S. Hardison, Bachelor of Science, School of Information Studies. Amanda J. Ricardo, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Anthony Joseph Pelosi, Bachelor of Arts, College of Visual and Performing Arts. Tracy Canary, Canary, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. Kimberly Lee Bowitz, Certificate, University College. Carly Abair, Bachelor of Science, David B. Paul College of Sport and Human Dynamics. <laughs> Thomas E. Rowan, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. Kailari Denise Ashley Esco, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Andre Fickelstein, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Kenneth A. Wilcox, Bachelor 
Technical Science School of Information Studies. <laughs> Alexandra Sheridan, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Philip Adams, Bachelor of Fine Arts, College of Visual and Performing Arts. Andrea H. Pollock, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Shasha Wheat, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Susan M. Fuchs, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk, College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Christine Santella, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk, College of Sport and Human Dynamics. <laughs> David Kenneth Kimball, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. <laughs> Maria. Suplecki, Bachelor of Science, School of Information Studies. <laughs> William Sparks, Certificate, University College. <laughs> Tasha Benjamin, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk, College of Sport and Human Wendy Chan and Son, Bachelor of Fine Arts, College of Visual and Performing Arts. <laughs> Brianna Chasen, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Colleen A. Hedges, Associate in Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. <laughs> Jessica L. Pluck, Bachelor of Science, David B. Falk, College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Science, David B. Falk, College of Sport and Human Dynamics. Andre H. Eason, Bachelor of Arts, College of Arts and Sciences. Benjamin T. Vasquez, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University College. Patricia McBride, Bachelor of Professional Studies, University of College. Let's give all of our graduates a round of applause.
and we've lost strength. So Carly wins the, another award for the biggest uh, celebration tonight. And Dara, I think Benjamin's speech is going to make its way into our next uh, commercial for University College. That was fantastic. On behalf of Chancellor Severin, tonight's distinguished guests, the University College staff, and the Syracuse University faculty, I sincerely congratulate the class of 2018 on the completion of your degree. One more round. And we hope that your connection to Syracuse University and University College continues well beyond this evening's travel event. After the ceremony, please join us for a reception in honor of our graduates being held in the quad at 10th A. I think it's not raining. Uh, staff members will guide you there, and we do have sushi for Dr. Haney. Okay. Please stand for the pen fiction and remain standing as we sing our alma mater. And until the dais party exits the stage, Megan Murphy, a music major in the Center School of Music in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, will lead us in the alma mater. Abel Sir, an instructor in the College of Visual and Performing Arts, will accompany her. The lyrics can be found on page 8 of your program. Reverend For those wondering about the power of prayer, this class is also historic. It is the last University College graduating class to endure this ceremony without air conditioning in Henry's Chapel. Uh, so thank you for those who have been praying for the last 90 years. If you are close to a graduate at this moment, we are going to bless that graduate. You want to put your hand on her shoulder. And if you see a graduate without a hand on her shoulder, please ask them your permission as a stranger. <laughs> to the graduates, may God bless you. And may God keep you. May God's face shine upon you. Gracious 